What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of the sit down. As always, if you enjoy this live video, please make sure you hit that like button and let me know what you think of today's discussion in the comment section below. If you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet, or you're living under a rock and seeing this video for the first time, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button below now so you never miss another sit down video. Also, if you enjoy cigars, check out our signature sit-down cigar from Pravada Cigar Club. Listen, guys, girls, it's about to be spring. The weather is getting nicer and nicer. When you're on that patio at night, taking a walk with your wife or husband, maybe on the beach, you want to have a cigar. Maybe you're going out to the cigar bar, grab some sit-down cigars. I promise you will like them. They're cheap and they're easy to get. They come in nice packaging. The link is in the private chat or the open chat here and in the link of this video. What's up, everybody? And welcome in. This is our normal Thursday live. I generally try to go live on Thursdays at 2 p.m. We're here every Thursday at 2 p.m. Back on the channel. Things are rocking and rolling. Shorts are coming out. We got videos popping up. It's good to be back. If you'd like to support this channel further, do me a favor. If you're in the live chat right now, click that little dollar sign at the bottom of the chat. Feel free to donate to the show. We greatly appreciate it. I'm going to be making over, not, I wouldn't say over the next two, several weeks. In the next month, after basketball season ends, I'm going to be making some big alterations to this studio you're seeing behind me. Um, we're going to do a lot of work here. So if you'd like to contribute anything to help our uh, new uh, set and all that sort of thing, feel free to uh, reach out. It means a lot and uh, feel free to donate. Uh, somebody's asking um, where the cigars are crafted. Um, they're in Chico Rivas's factory. They're Dominican. Um, but uh, go check out the link, Daniel. Uh, all the info is there. Uh, here's the link one more time. Uh, okay, guys, I got a lot to talk about today. I want to talk about a couple of things. I want to talk about Joey Molino. Uh, Joey recently made a decision that I think is going to be a really good one for him and the podcast. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Gotti gals who have decided to, like their grandfather and father-in-law, uh, head to court and uh, try to uh, beat a rap and beat a case. Uh, they didn't admit anything. Even though they're not in the streets, they still live by street law. We'll take some of your questions as well if you have them. Um, and, uh, yeah, have some fun here on a Thursday as we normally do shout out to everybody in the chat already 125 people in here shout out to you shout out to you for being here make sure you check out my latest video it is a very interesting interview with a person called eric foss we talk about eric's time in prison uh, federally twice he was in with a lot of mobsters norman dupont vito guzzo jimmy coonan mark Ryder, uh tony aiello all sorts of people uh go check that out it was a long interview but it was a fun one Nonetheless, I got another new video coming out Saturday, and we're going to have some fun. But I want to talk about uh, Skinny Joey Molino, who, as we know, uh, Vlad TV, that interview's slowly matriculating out onto uh, YouTube. Again, didn't understand why Vlad did it the way he did. Um, I think putting it out all at one shot, I know Vlad doesn't do that, but I think in this case it would have worked really well. I think he would have got a lot of views on one video, an hour long, one video. Here's the issue. You put it out one by one. Two or three episodes in, most people are not going to keep watching it because they want stories and they may not get them. They're not going to get them. It's the mob people that are going to enjoy it. You put it out once, you're going to get that. I thought, I think it would have got to a million views. I really do. Um, and then you want to put out clips, do it. But I, I would have taken one hard shot and one hard swoop and put it out all at once. Uh, Joey made a big decision recently, from what I understand. And I put this out the other day. Joey Molino has separated he and Little Snuff from Kevin Connolly in Action Park Media. Now, there was a lot of hullabaloo about this. A lot of people thought that it was because of a recent post from John Panisi. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not what happened here. Um, from what I understand, this decision was made uh, – over a week ago. Um, and I think it was really just creative differences. 
Um, these guys have decided they're just going to kind of take it and they independently own it anyway. So why not just keep it under their own? Uh, they can bring in the people they want to bring in. They have ad people. They have a guy kind of running the show now that that's close to Joey. Uh, and I think it's probably the right decision. I think sometimes, and, and I know this because I worked with a bigger company, right? I worked with a company in this media space. It's not all it's cracked up to be right? You get the namesake, right? I worked at Barstool Sports. But the truth of the matter is, where I was in this studio in my house, there wasn't that much Barstool could do for me, quite honestly. I had to produce everything. I had to edit everything. I wasn't getting much of a bump from them. We built this audience ourselves, right? So when you look at a big company, you have to ask yourself, what do they do for me? Are they taking more from me than what they're giving me? And as someone who's confident in my ability to produce content, I felt like, well, if I'm going to do this, I can make all my money and do it myself. I don't need them. And I think that's what Joey's thought. These guys looked at it and said, well, what are they really doing for us? Now, I don't speak for them, but I'm guessing that's what happened here. It's not hard to go out and find your own podcast studio. You find a, a, a young guy that likes to edit and can edit. It's not that difficult. You know, why not own everything 100% instead of doling out half your money or more than half to a company that may or may not be doing anything for you? Um, I know Kevin. He's a nice guy. He's a good guy. I talk to him every once in a while. I think Kevin will be just fine. Uh, Kevin's a, a good a good guy and, and, and a hard worker and has all sorts of other things he's doing. And I'm sure it was an amiable, uh, you know, kind of split. Uh, but uh, I think being back on their own will really help the show. Not that it wasn't doing well already, but Patreon is a really good avenue. I myself have it for sports betting. It is an awesome platform. I think these guys are really starting to have some success on there. You know, cutting out YouTube, which I think is the goal for any creator. We focus so much sometimes on YouTube and some of these other things. And it, we, we've we seen, we saw it with me. They can just pull you right out of the carpet under you and, and take everything you've done. You know, the rules are, are, are you know, there and, and they become tougher and tougher to abide by. And I think these guys said, you know what? We're just going to cut out the middleman. We're going to bring the content directly to you. You're going to pay us a small amount for it. You're getting stories nobody's heard before. I got to tell you guys, and, and look, I'm not, I'm not a show for these guys. I don't work for these guys. I don't get nothing by doing this. I will tell you right now, their interview today with a guy, Ralphie Head, is awesome. This is what these guys are best at, interviewing these South Philly quirky personalities that have been around South Philly for years. I mean, Ralphie Head is a legend, right? You just got to go. Go, go check the Patreon out and watch this interview. This Ralphie Head, legend. You know, look, I lived in South Philly for years. I heard stories about Ralphie Head. Uh, Ralphie Head is a guy who – here's here's just a quick story about Ralphie Head. I heard a story that Ralphie Head in the late 2000s got arrested for bookmaking. Facing the judge, judge gives him house arrest in a case. He says to the judge, this is a true story. He asked the judge if he can leave his house that night to go sing. He was a singer. He's a singer. To sing at 20th and Argon at a catering hall. People were coming to see him. He had to go. Could the judge please grant him the ability to go? He then asked the judge if he wants to come watch him as well. And the judge laughs and basically lets him do it. He was a singer for like a cover band of this old uh, King of Swing singer. This guy's a, a fucking legend, man. Like, go check that out. Very funny interview. Just a, an interesting old school guy. And that's, I think, what those guys do best. You know, just rocking and rolling with someone they've known for, you know, in, in Joey's case, probably 50 years. You know, I believe, um, as far as I know as well, Joe Snuff is related to Rafi Head. Um, very funny. Very funny. You should definitely check it out for sure. Um, I don't know what's going on with our comment section today. Our, our comments is not coming in. I feel like we usually have way more comments. There's over 200 people in here. What, what's going on with the comments here? Uh, usually I'm way behind in the comments. Very, uh, very weird. Uh, Kenny M says, I watched Joey's new Patreon today, talking about him and Marty Angelina at seven years old. Wild to see how far back they all go. Exactly. 
and 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 someone like Ralph Behead, I mean, he, I think he said he's known Joey since he was like five years old. Joey's like sixty. That's nuts, right? And that shows you South Philly. It's very close knit. You know, people have been there the whole life. Um, very um, very good stuff. Um, James says, "I love your show." First time commenter. What's up, James? How are you today? Thank you for being here and welcome. Appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoy what we're doing. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Ryan Hutchinson said, looking forward to watching this later. Thank you for your content always. Thank you, Ryan Hutchinson. I appreciate that. Um, it means a lot that so many people like this. And you know what it's interesting, too, is I see so many comments of people saying, hey, I'm here for the first time. I just found your content. Um, that means a lot to me. You know, the goal is always to um, to grow, grow, grow. Right. If you're not growing, you're dying. My dad always told me that if you're not growing, you're dying. Um, so, you know, it, it's really cool to see that we always are having new people here that find the channel. Um, good stuff, Eduardo. I hope you're having a good uh, lunch. What are you what are you eating today? I don't eat lunch, but um, I, I'm curious to know what you're eating. Um, all right. What else do we have here? Everyone hit the like. Yes, please. Please hit the like button, please. Uh, Matt S says, I watched one clip and didn't go back. Uh, all right. Well, good for you. Uh, much love, Jeff. Building my YouTube channel. It's not easy. All the best, bro. No, it's not easy. It's not easy. That's what uh, I think is so special to me about building what I've been able to build is, as he said, um, it is not easy to build a YouTube channel. Um, you know, it's funny and it's not really funny. It generally takes someone, a regular person. 22 months to get monetized on YouTube. 22 months. Think about that. That's nearly two years. We did it as far as videos quite quickly. I know a lot of people have. Um, it's all about, you know, just finding something that works um, and uh, and running with it. So, you know, keep, keep at it, man. You'll get there eventually. Uh, Mike HBK, what's going on? Uh, I also want to talk about the Gotties, uh, who are back in the news. Um, yesterday in court, and their lawyer told me about this, him and Gianna Gotti have decided to go to court. They are not going to plead. They were offered 12 weeks of anger management and have decided to fight the case. If you remember about a month ago, they were involved in a fight at a basketball game, a high school basketball game with another woman. Um, they are claiming that the other woman started it and they will not plead to something they didn't do. Um, from what I understand and from what I've heard, there is video beyond a reasonable doubt that show the other woman throwing the punch. And that's all you need to know. In this case, you have the ability to defend yourself. I wonder if the daughter will have to deal with something here. Um, we'll see. Um, but, you know, she's coming to the aid of her mother, right? Um, but they're, you know, a family that are fairly, fairly interesting. I mean, I do find it interesting that they're, we don't take pleas. We don't sue. You know, you're not in the streets. I think that's very interesting with that family. It's like, we know they're not in the streets, but even like the kids of these people. We're not, we're, we're not taking pleas. We're not, you know, it, it's, I guess it's in their case, honorable. Um, that's, um, that's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Um, sorry guys, I'm just getting a message coming in. Um, yeah, I find that interesting that they're like, we don't take pleas. We don't sue people, you know, so much for being regular people. Now you're out of the life, right? Um, what's up, Michael? How are you? Uh, you know, I got to feel bad for like the, the little, like the little like, um, towns in America that have to deal with like little cases like this. It's like, do you really have to put resources into stuff like this? But again, right is right. If you didn't do something, you know, why admit to it? You know, and I give them credit for that, you know, um, you know, we so much see people take pleas and just say, you know what, I may not have even done it, but whatever. I just want to get it over with. I give them credit for standing on their their uh, their morals, right, and how they feel. 
And it was funny seeing Junior Gotti, you know, kind of hold court and, you know, talk to the media. He had the Dapper Don Letterman's jacket on. I mean, you got to say, I mean, Junior Gotti, he is very uh, just a caricature to me. I mean, I thought the Letterman's jacket was very funny. He's like, I don't even give a shit, Judge. I'm going to wear what I want here. You know, the, the daughter's looking beautiful. I didn't see the wife. Um, daughter was looking beautiful, you know, looked very nice. Uh, he comes strolling in with, uh, you know, Letterman's jacket on with the Dapper Don and the New York, uh, state emblem on the back. That was electric. I have to say, uh, Vinny. Hey, Jeff from Howard beach. What's up, Vinny? Um, Nancy J says new Joey Molino has been running the show since the late eighties. Um, yeah, I mean that's what you think. Uh, allegedly, um, we're not gonna we're not gonna put that out as fact. Um, I guess that's just your opinion, though. Uh, Kevin Barakowskis, what's happening? What's going on? Uh, Craig Tracy, ten dollars Canadian. Thank you, Craig. Uh, appreciate you watching. Shout out to British Columbia. Shout out to Canada in the building. Um, sorry, I always get texts right when this show starts. Um, so, sorry. Doug McClain, how are you? Great content as always. Thank you, Doug McClain. If anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them here in the chat. Uh, I always um, I always welcome anybody that has any comments or questions. If you'd like to donate to the channel, feel free to hit that super chat icon. Uh, Harlan Romeo says, I heard Joey was on Vlad TV. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. That, uh, that interview is uh, making the rounds. Um, what do you think about Phil Leonetti? Uh, what do I think about him? Uh, I find him interesting. You know, I, I like uh, his interviews. He doesn't do many of them. I think Phil, I feel bad for, always have. I don't think Phil is a guy who was cut out for that life. I have heard, though, people say Phil was a real scumbag. Um, look, I mean, it was Nicky Scarfo's nephew. So, I mean, I'm guessing the apple didn't fall far from the tree. But when you're Phil Leonetti, um, you were put into that situation. Nicky was essentially his father figure. Um, I mean, Nikki was taking him on hits when he was like eight years old. You know, it's like, what did you have? I always say these people that we talk about are products of their environments. Just like any other person. If you grew up in an area bereft of a father figure and all you see on the corner is a guy selling drugs, naturally you're going to gravitate towards him and he's going to be your father figure. Gangs live like that. Same with the mafia. They are parasites. They're going to find children. They're going to grow them up. And those kids are generally the next in line. Luckily, that's not happening as much anymore. But all of these people in these neighborhoods that commit crimes on an organized level, they are all parasites and they are all looking to leech on to younger people, essentially saying, look, we will provide you something you are not getting. We'll give you money. We'll help you out. We'll give you a feel of a, of a family. And a lot of kids don't have that, you know, and 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 that's, again, doesn't really matter what. uh racial makeup you have. It doesn't matter what a nationality you are. Um, that is a norm around the world. BX Bricklayer says, your dad was a great man. All bricklayers are great men. Yeah, that's how he got started. Uh, my dad was a bricklayer since age 14. Um, you know, he worked and started as a laborer, got two of his fingers ripped off in a cement mixer, um, and uh, graduated to becoming a bricklayer, learned to become a master bricklayer, and Started his own business and the rest is history. So shout out to all the bricklayers out there, the Masons, real men. All right, Kenny M says, stories about Joey's father show you how terrifying he was too. Yeah, I've done a show on him. He uh, he was definitely a, a higher up and a very interesting guy as well. They look dead alike as well. 280 people here. Thank you for watching. Please hit that like button if you have any comments or questions. Feel free to drop them in the chat. Is there anything you've always wanted to know that maybe you wanted to ask me? Now's your chance. Uh, Don Vito Casho Faro. What's up? What's happening? Uh, Richard says, if you ever make it to Chicago, give me a holler. Uh, I don't know if I ever will. I was there last year. I liked it. thought it was cool. Uh, I went to, um, I remember, I was, I was before I went, I was like researching food. You know, very fat of me, I know. But uh, I was watching uh, this thing about the uh, Billy Goat Tavern. And I have to say, the burgers just looked so good on TV. I'm like, you know what? As soon as I get to this place, I'm going to it. 
and I, my hotel was actually pretty close to the spot. I walked. It was like 10 p.m. I walked to Billy Goat Tavern, and I ate two. I mean, it was it was electric. It was so good. What a great place that was. Um, but I enjoyed Chicago. I thought it was very good. I had a, a um, so I went to Valar, I believe it's called, uh, with a friend of mine. Very good. I like Chicago. I thought it was a cool city. I'm a school teacher. I eat now and taste it later. Uh, there we go. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, you don't have much time doing that uh, nowadays. Uh, you gotta, you gotta get, get, go quick with, uh, with the lunches as, as, as a, as a uh, teacher. The Teflon lady. The Teflon gal, yeah. Good for them. Why should they accept a misdemeanor crime in their record? Well, if they're found not guilty, they must believe they have a good defense, which uh, it sounds like um, it sounds like they do. Um, did you see the jacket that Junior was wearing? Yeah, I mentioned that. Uh, not taking pleas in this day and age is crazy. Genevieve's family learned that it is useful. Yeah, but but Kenny, the difference is. We're talking about RICO cases and some like really low level misdemeanor. It's a little different here. Um, they're not facing life in prison for this. Um, all right. Um, Angel doesn't seem to agree with the no lawsuits decree that the rest of the family seems to abide by. Uh, yeah, I have heard her threaten people uh, with lawsuits. That said, um, you know, she shouldn't have to abide by that. I, I don't know why they would because. She, she, as they aren't, aren't in the street. So I don't think there's any reason that Angel shouldn't abide by, you know, about, should buy by some lawsuit decree. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess she decides to live her life a different way. Uh, Je uh, Terry Clements says, Jeff, reference cigars, great construction, nice draw, good flavor, long lasting smoke, and nice price. I hope you continue your collaboration with Pravada. Well, thank you, uh, Terry. Um, that means a lot. See, so Terry is a happy customer. Uh, if you would like to buy some cigars, the link is in the chat. Uh, thank you, Terry. It means a lot. Uh, Pravada's good people. I'm happy to be around them. Uh, L. Ron Hubbard says, do you ever read any mob books or just Wikipedia? Um, you know how fucking stupid you sound, L. Ron? Seriously? Like, you really sound fucking dumb. Anybody that's called L. Ron, what the fuck is it? What's your first name, dickhead? Why don't you put your first name? L. What's it? What is it? Leroy or Larry or Lawrence? L. Ron. Just say your fucking name, dude. Do I just read Wikipedia? No, I don't read Wikipedia, you fucking idiot. Do you know how many people I've done, L. Ron? And I know you're here to troll. Do you know how many people I've done that are not on Wikipedia? You know how stupid you sound? Really? Yeah. All the, also, do you see all those books back there, dude? See them? Right here? They're called books. In Spanish, it's Libro. Did you know that? L. Ron, we've never seen you here before, and uh, we advise you to just fuck the fuck off, all right? I don't know about you, Jeff. Here's another one. I don't know about you, Jeff, but I find Sammy the Bull's content extremely boring. I've stopped watching it. I love your content. I don't know about... Oh, I don't know about you, Jeff, but I find Sammy the Um. Yeah, it's definitely not the same, Peter, for sure. Thank you for the comment. You're right. Look, at one point, they had a good, real producer running it. Now it's just throwing together a live and seeing where it goes. Uh, there's no thought put into the content. It's clear they've thrown in the towel with the content. And now the goal is to just get people to pay people. Um, like, pay them, and they'll tell your question. But you have a lot of sims that will still pay for it. So I hear you, Peter. Uh, I hear you. I think a lot of people think that way. Red Rose of Summer, what's happening? Uh, I'm doing well. Um, what are your plans going forward? Uh, no no difference. We're just going to keep doing what we do, uh, interviewing people and putting out episodes, that sort of thing. When is the next Hector Pagan video? Uh, nothing has been scheduled. Nothing has been scheduled. Um it's crazy how Leonetti married the girlfriend of the dude he whacked. Um, yeah. I don't really see a big deal with it, though. He wasn't friends with the guy, so who cares? Um, but her, on the other hand, I do find that a little... They must really love each other. 
Rocky Mars says I lost my finger too. Oh wow, really? I mean, it was interesting because my dad was ended ended up being able to get it sewed back on both fingers, but he he had to deal with it his entire life. NYC Crime Spot says, I quit a union job of refusing to take anger management. Who wants that on the record? Plus, I wasn't even angry. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to do that. I agree with you. I, I, I give good for them. You know, if they believe they can beat it, I, I wouldn't want to do that either. Do I think the story about Phil Leonetti coming back to Atlantic City and meeting Nikki Jr. is true? Um, I've never heard that story, so I can't I can't comment on it. Jeff, those Italian roast beef sandwiches in Chicago are amazing, too. The Billy Goat story is entertaining. Yeah, I didn't have any Italian beef, but uh, the Billy Goat was very good. Very, very, um, you know, I was really hungry, too, which I think helped. And I had traveled and, you know, moved around all day. So I had eaten all day. So, yeah, it was great. L. Ron Hubbard was the founder of Scientology. Oh, well, no surprise. He's a fucking complete idiot. No surprise. Mob Talk all started on YouTube. Now it's all about Patreon. Is it? I mean, there's only two people on Patreon, and they're both worthy of charging for it. Listen, John, I know this might come as a surprise to you, but some of us make our living making content, and we feel that, at least for us, we should make something out of it. Um, I, I guess what I never understood about, and I'm not signaling you out, but I just want to kind of make all of you understand. Most of you have Netflix. Most of you pay for HBO. Most of you have, um, you know, different subscriptions. Why is this kind of content any different? Now, for me, I have TikTok, which is free. I have this, which is free. I have, I don't, I don't have a Patreon, but I mean, I make a little money out of this but it's not that much you know I, I it's sad though that like a lot of people just think that we should do it for free and i don't i think that's a good way to start you know doing it on youtube but uh you know you just got to keep moving and, and try to see if it can't make you money who is the better boss tony ducks or tony accardo uh both were good bosses. I would say that the better, longer-term boss was definitely Tony Accardo. Tony Accardo is on the Mount Rushmore to me. He also did it staying out of jail. Tony Ducks died in federal prison. Tony Ducks also had a real issue on his hands because he very much made a poor decision in bringing up Casso and Amuso as his successors. I'm not telling you that there was a bunch of talent below them, but they screwed that family. Uh, horribly. It's a shame Neil Migliore wasn't on the street. Neil would have been a great boss, and he was very close with Tony Ducks. It also didn't help Tony Ducks that uh, Tom Mix went away as well. Paul Varia was in prison. Who else do you go to? Neil Migliore should have been the best boss, next boss, though. That would have made a lot more sense. But I don't think it would have mattered, though, because I think Amuso and Casa were bloodthirsty, and they were going to do what they had to do to become boss and underboss. So now Tony Accardo is definitely better boss. Never went to prison. Never. Kenny M says, I'm well researched in the life. And Jeff brings up shit that I don't even know. He found how he finds. Uh, yeah. I, listen, anybody that mentions Wikipedia is just a fucking idiot. And I, I completely discount anything they ever say. Because if you think that way, you're just a fucking idiot. There's nothing funnier than Jeff clowning the trolls. Well, thank you, bro. Thank you. Um, I try. I try to have fun here. Uh, by the way, for anyone curious, I have the Aqueduct early pick five and I have the Gulfstream early pick five. I am three for three in the early Aqueduct pick th pick five. I have two more races to go. Let's see how we're doing at Chalkstream Park. I'm sure, I'm sure we've already lost there because it's always Chalk City there. No, we're still alive. We're we're alive in both. All right. We're coming. We're getting there. We're through three races in both Aqueduct and Gulfstream, and we are still alive. We have two races left. I would really like to cash both of these, and I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, I'd like more money. And number two, we had some good prices. 
first three at Gulfstream, we've had eleven dollar horse and a nine dollar horse, which for this uh, place is uh, nice. I mean, generally it's two and three and four dollar horses every fucking race. Uh, now Aqueduct, what have we had here? Uh, we've had a uh, three dollar and fifty cent horse, not great. We had a seventeen dollar horse, so we got our price horse, uh, and then we had a five dollar horse. So look, we're not going to make mounds of money here. Uh, that's if we hit, but we're getting there. Uh, have you ever done a video on Frank Lastorino? Uh, no, but he's on my list. Uh, we'll do him soon. Maybe this weekend, actually. Maybe this weekend. Matt Craig, good morning from Australia. Appreciate your hard work always. What up, Matt Craig? It is already Friday in Australia. Shout out to Matt Craig checking in. I love my people in Australia. Um, Foster's. Australian for beer. Uh, I actually bet some horse racing in Australia. Driving to Wells says, what up, Jeff? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Okay, guys, I, enough. I know uh, Ron Hubbard started Scientology. Thank you. Enough people told me that already. Uh, 340 people in here. Thank you for watching. Please hit that like button. If you enjoy uh, what we're doing, feel free to donate to the channel. And if you want, feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Uh, Frem says, Jeff, nice to see you. What's up, Frem? What's going on? Daniel Topi says, Jeff, do you have a trading platform? Uh, no, I don't I don't deal with any of that stuff. My dad was big into that, though. Uh, my brother does it, too, but not at this point. Um, I mean, I have, like, mutual funds and stuff that people do for me, but I don't, I don't do that personally, no. Uh, Ryan Plays says, Jeff, what's Joey made a decision on? I just came into the video, so I don't know what's gone on. Uh, he moved away from Kevin Connolly. They're on their own again. Uh, Xavier San Diego says, new subscriber. I've been watching your channel. Very good stuff, Jeff. Glad to be a part of it. Thank you, Xavier San Diego. I love that. Another new person. Welcome in, my man. Bienvenido, as they would say. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, welcome in. It's so great to be seeing new people. Not that I don't like all the same people, but I'm glad to have you. Welcome. Welcome. San Diego, what a beautiful city that is. Have you ever done anything on Dominic Montiglio? No, I haven't. Uh, I'm not sure that I ever will either. Uh, I think we've done enough on uh, on the DeMeo group. Um, I've done an episode on Nino Gaggi. I've done stuff on Roy DeMeo. I've done stuff on the Gemini crew. I, I don't. I just don't think there's much more I need to do on it. Um, the linchpin of Brooklyn's good. Check that out. That's about Don Montiglio. Uh, I know Crime Spot does stuff on those guys. Um, it's hard to get them monetized anyway. You have to talk about some really depraved things, and um, YouTube just doesn't like that sort of thing. All right. Uh, what else do we have here today? Thank you, everybody, for joining me. A lot of good people here today. All right. Race four, we have two horses coming up, and, and we have the favorites. So, again, not going to help us much if we're able to move on here. Uh, but I just want to see some things go through the hoop here. Uh, Steve from 13th says, you ever in Brooklyn come to the spot, Leone's, get you a nice sandwich. Uh, yeah, send me a DM, Steve. I'm actually going to. Uh, take you up on that when the spring uh, time comes. Uh, so let me know where you're at. Send me an email to sit down 777 at gmail.com. Sit down 777 at gmail.com. No, no, I won't be doing that. Uh, Agent X says, Love your content. By far the best in the genre. I enjoy your short on Peter Pasta. Would love if you can get him on your show. I've tried. Um, I've tried to find him. If anybody knows where Peter Pasta is, I'd like to speak to him. Maybe he'll talk to me. I actually think I'm going to do him on Saturday. I'm going to do a full show on Peter Pasta and some of the stuff he's been up to. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you. Gary Wyatt says, Jeff is very knowledgeable about college basketball. I followed him for years straight, straight shooter. Uh, thank you, Gary. I know you have, and I mean, that means a lot to me guys. Um, can you guys do me a favor? Uh, I'm, I don't normally ask for stuff like this. But I want to ask you to do me a favor. So it is March. As a lot of, you know, uh, you've heard the words March madness referring to college basketball. If you enjoy sports betting, I'd ask all of you, even if you're not going to watch it, go subscribe to my college basketball show. I do a college basketball show 
almost every day with uh, some of my friends over at BetUS, go subscribe to our channel. We're there every day, 11 a.m., 10 o'clock on Saturdays. If you like college hoops, you're interested in gambling, we talk about all that and more, go check that out. Go subscribe. It would mean a lot to me, um, and it's free, and you'll get some good content. Thank you, Gary, for making that uh, name. Uh, th thank you for making uh, that uh, vocal. Appreciate it. L. Ron Hubbard says, what a dumb pig. Can't name one book he's read. I rest my case. Uh, well, dumb fuck. I've read all these books. Covert, Gamora. I read the nutty, gaudy rules. What about the gaudy wars? You stupid fucking clown. You look up to a fucking scam artist. Fuck you and fuck Scientology, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Jeff Hopo as well. Thank you for the great stories. Anyway, on March 31st, it'll be Salvi Testa's birthday. Giving you unseen footage of him. Thanks. Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. Though I might have an idea on that. I'll let you know. Good afternoon, Jeff. What's up, Keynes? Thank you for watching. Nancy J says, I saw you on Matthew Cox and was sad to hear about your monetization issue with your shorts. You put so much work into your content, and it's appreciated. Thank you, Nancy J. Yeah, that was tough. It was a tough thing for me, but luckily we were able to get through it, and uh, we're back. I did do three months in uh, YouTube, uh, you know, J-A-I-L. But uh, I, we're back, and now we know what to do and what not to do. Uh, A-B-D-N-1 says, Jeff, evening from Aberdeen in Scotland. It's hard to research the shadow realm of OC. Just keep rolling. I wonder why there's no Scottish G's in America. Didn't we go there in numbers? Yes, you did. But you became uh, upstanding members of society for the most part um, and didn't get into crime. Um, it's a good point. Um, but yes, there's no, uh, you know... Uh, you know, a Peaky Blinders types here. I know that was in England, Birmingham, but you know what I mean. Daniel Kinahan, though, he's Irish. Um, I know he's been here at some point. Uh, shout out to Aberdeen. Shout out to Scotland. Shout out to Glasgow. Aberdeen. I actually bet the Scottish League a lot. Kilmarnock. I bet them. Hearts of Midlothian. <sighs> That's me. Soccer, baby. Uh, let me see what's going on in the soccer game that I bet. I mean, Roma is just destroying Brighton. What a brutal beat this is. I had both teams to score in this game. It's just brutal. Brighton, 60% possession, 11 shots, no goals. Brutal. Brutal. Why well, be betting on Cheltenham? Um, no. No. Probably not. Probably not. I already have too much to bet uh, here. I'll have to put you on Naira. Put me on Naira. I would love that. Do you ever come down to Gulfstream? I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it. Maybe in April. Maybe in April. Uh, I've got too much going on right now, but maybe in April I will. I'd love to come down for like two or three days and just handicap Gulfstream. I hate Chalkstream, but I still bet it. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I like Denver in that one. What's up, Bill Catolo? Shout out to you. Did I see this? Mike DeBella, $20. What up, Mike DeBella? Check out Mike DeBella coming in long and lengthy. What up, Mike DeBella? $20. Mike DeBella's always on vacation. I got to live like him. What a legend. Shout out Mike DeBella, my man. Look at Mike DeBella's picture. He's even on vacation in his picture. Um, let me get that up here. He's even... Uh, He's even in vacation. He's at the beach in his picture. Uh, what's up from Long Island? What up, Vita? What's going on? Nah, nah, I'm not into crypto. You know, I'll tell you a story about crypto. When I was a kid, this was like uh, maybe 2009, 2010. I remember um, I lived in Philly at the time. I remember I went home for uh, a couple of days to see my parents. And my brother was in college at the time. And we had dinner at my parents' house. My brother comes and shows up with some kid from from college. I guess it's like roommate or something. The kid comes in and you know he starts talking and um the the kid's like talking our ear off about something called Bitcoin. 
and I remember I said to my dad, I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? What the fuck's he even talking about? Uh, uh, I, he was he was telling us about uh, like this currency online. And I'm thinking like, what a fucking Yahoo this guy is. My dad's like, yeah, because my dad was big into stocks. He's like, who would buy that? I'm like, I don't know who the fuck would buy that. And the kid's telling us how he has like 110 bitcoins and like they're worth nothing and someday they're going to be worth all this money. And I'm thinking like, what an idiot, you know, like who would buy this nonsense? And he was telling us how like he would buy pizza with like a half of one or something. And it's like, oh, cool. And like I think back now and I'm like, that kid's mad rich now. You know, he's got like hundreds of bitcoins. He's. I think one Bitcoin, let me see, how much is one Bitcoin worth? One Bitcoin is worth $67,000. And he has like hundreds. So I should have listened. If only I could go, if I could go back to, you know what? If I could go back and and it'd be great because my dad would be there. If I go back to one time in my life, it would be that dinner and listening to that kid on how I can, I didn't have much money to my name at the time, probably a few thousand dollars. But I would have probably taken a thousand of it and bought like, I don't know, a hundred bitcoins. I wouldn't be on here right now. Trust me. that. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I from then on, I'm like, you know what? I ain't going to be in on this because as a gambler, I never bet something at the highest. Like, I'm just am not going to do that. Uh, Robert B., what's going on? What's going on? Would you say horses are a lot different than major? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Horses, the prices can change. You know, if you bet a horse is seven to two, in a minute it could be six to five. You know, that, that's obviously one of the big things. But horses, you have to look at speed figures, trainer jockey stats, uh, how long they've been on a layoff, the conditions, the surface, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. Do they have Lasix? You know, any changes they've made? Do they have a new trainer who's good off of a, 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 a barn switch? You know, some train. And then you have stuff like, so like at parks, right? Parks is a track I bet all the time. There are jockeys at parks that are corrupt. Like every time they have a horse, the horse either wins or get to places, win, place, or show. So like at parks, like Jamie Ness, anytime he has a horse, you bet it. Like he he doesn't follow the rules. And the problem with these like lower level tracks, I mean, you see nutty shit all the time. You'll see like a horse. 40 to one long shot in the field. He's like 30 lengths off the lead and he'll look like secretariat and win. Like, you know, what's going on. They don't even try to hide it at those tracks. Scott K says, bro, for a fat kid, you've got a thin skin. Um, well, Scott K for a fucking moron. You have quite the fucking mouth on you. Why don't you join the show? Dickhead. And tell me that to my face. We'll wait for you. We'll go ahead and guess you'll be just like any of these other fucking clowns. Um, here's the link. Join. Paul Atkinson says Ranger fan. Oh, yeah. That last. Yeah. What's up, Paul? What's up, Frank? What's going on, my man? Como stai? Great video with the dude from Baltimore. I just couldn't deal with the other cap. I try to keep bringing the heat. Always look forward to listening. Um, great video, but I couldn't deal with the other cat. I don't even know. But thank you for watching, D. Thank you so much. Vinny Boombots, what's happening, guys? Uh, how every, how's everybody doing tonight? Doesn't matter, says, hi, Jeff. Love from Romania. Just ending the second shift so the wife and kids can be comfy at home. Shout out to Bucharest. I love Romania. Shout out to Romania. Top G, baby. Romania. I love Romania. Shout out to all my people in Romania. I actually know a guy in Romania. He's a great soccer handicapper. Shout out to Alex from Romania. Good good man right there. Um, shout out to Romania. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Welcome. Uh, Robert B says, how are you feeling? Good, I hope. Yes, I am good. I hope you are as well, man. Wow, Big Couture says, I speak to Peter Pasta? Really? Petey Presta or Peter Pasta? Don't don't uh don't get me excited, Bill Catolo. Don't get me excited here. I'm kind of excited now. Um, I believe the two just won a golf stream. Is that true? Did the two win? Tell me the two won. I'm just wanting to move on. I just want to win at this point. I don't even care about prices. I believe the two won. I believe the two won. Three to five. That's 
I would actually hope that that horse wasn't included in this because it means absolutely nothing. Um, I'm going to just hope to get my money back in this, to be fucking honest. Um, this is golf stream for you. Yeah, two ones easily. I mean, it looks like it's fucking a monsoon at golf stream. This is the, this is how you know these tracks are corrupt, right? It is pouring at golf stream. It's mud, it's pouring, and every favorite's still winning. Like, what are we doing here? All right. Uh, you mentioned Neil Meglior. Duke got shot with a shotgun and stayed and then went on the panel. Arguably one of the most LCN guys ever. Yeah, he is. I did a show on him. Very interesting guy. I agree with you there. Kevin Kev says, go Vols. Yeah, I had him last night. Minus five. Winner, winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, what's going on with Aqueduct here? Uh, we still got uh, 10 minutes. All right. Michael Simmer says, Jeff, how you doing today? Hope all is well, and I'm glad I caught your live. What up, Michael? Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Yeah, I'm going to probably get to that uh, soon. I got to do a story on Buffalo. Anthony Michael Aurelio says, hey, Jeff, I'm a big Mikey Scars fan. I'm Reggie from North Jersey. Have you ever did anything on the Jersey crew? I've done videos on people in New Jersey. I've done the Calvacanti videos. I've done um, Genovese, New Jersey videos. I've done Lucchese. I've done the Pernas and Lucchese's. I've done Bobby Mana. I've done uh, Benny Eggs, who had some influence there. He wasn't from Jersey, but had influence there. Um, yeah, I've done Vinny Ocean. I've done... John D'Amato. Yeah, I've done all sorts of videos. Guys, if you ever have a question and if I've done a video, just search the sit down and then the name you're looking for. It'll likely come up. I've done videos on a lot of people. Um, oh, here we go with the pronunciation, please. Jeff, regards from Edinburgh. It's pronounced Edinburgh. Well, whatever. I'm not Scottish, Vincenzo. Give me a break. Guys, listen. I know this might come as a surprise to a lot of you. We don't all speak the same. Right. So like if I see um, Edinburgh, I'm going to say Edinburgh. That's what we say here. We don't say Edinburgh. We, we don't speak like that. Vincenzo, just be surprised. I know where that is because 99 percent of this country couldn't tell you where Edinburgh was. By the way, you're Italian, aren't you? Like those are the. And I like you, Vincenzo. I'm not coming at you, but the, the two worst people in the comment section are the pronunciation police. Um, look, if you get a name and you butcher it, like fine. But like, and then the people that are like, this is where this is, not there. I remember one time um th that I, I did a video. I I said Marion was in Indiana, not Illinois, and it's like Nadu doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. He thought this was in Indiana. Do you know how long I worked on this video? It was a simple misbeat. Two I states. Not that big a deal. Jeff, would, it would be like um, Vincenzo. If, if I came, Let's say you had a restaurant and the whole meal was fucking great. And I made, I made a case about the floors were wet because it was raining. It's like, really? Like, that's what I made a case about? It's fucking raining. Of course the floors are going to be wet. You know, it's nitpicky shit. Who cares? Vincenzo, I guarantee if I went to the center of my town five minutes away and I asked 10 people where Edinburgh was, they wouldn't know. Just be happy that someone in America knows where that is. Uh, would you do a show on Stephen Flemmy, who is with Whitey? Sounds interesting. I watched the Whitey documentary. It's pretty good. Um, probably not. I've done a show on Whitey. I really don't want to talk much about him. He's a piece of shit to the highest level. Uh, maybe at some point, but I, it's not on my list. Maybe I'll throw it on my list. I'm glad your channel got monetized. You're one of the best. Keep up the great work, buddy. Thank you, Jay Biz. Appreciate you, my friend. I did, Bill Lynch. Thank God. Thank God. Scientology is for weirdos. It has no basis for religion. It was just made up by weirdos that watch too many sci-fi movies. Yeah, shout out to uh, that piece of shit, Danny Masterson. Wasn't he a believer in Scientology? Uh, Sam, I sent you an email. All right, well, I'll take a look. Thank you. Good to hear that. Good to hear that. I don't support any team. I'm just a gambler. I'm more of a um, I'm more of a uh, a Serie guy, and I actually bet a lot of championship in England. I'm not a big Premier League. I, I'm more or less like the championship, but it's all about money for me. I don't I don't have a side that I root for or anything. 
Um, Chris L says, Jeff, you look strikingly similar to Babe Ruth. Any chance you're related? Um, no, I don't believe so. Um, he was from Baltimore, which isn't far from me. Um, I don't believe I am, no. Um, I guess you never know. Maybe someone distantly was to, to him. But no, I believe we were just uh, someone that looked alike. <laughs> I have heard that, though, many times. I, I don't mind. Babe Ruth was probably the greatest baseball player ever. So I don't mind. I don't mind that. Yeah, yeah. It, it It's kind of sickening to hear now, Barry. Uh, yeah, yeah. If only we knew back then. Oh, I've I've seen that. Absolutely. I actually used to uh, do a show with an old Premier Leaguer. It was, his name was uh, Flash Watson. He played for Huddersfield and Southampton and some other teams. And even his uh, game footage from like the 90s was – was so much different. I mean, nowadays the athletes are just so unbelievable. Oh yeah, I know. I will. I won't forget that for sure. Eric Gambrone says, "Glad to get catch alive." What's up, Eric? Thank you for watching. Do I bet on trotters or only flats? <laughs> flats. Uh, I bet on trotters. <laughs> Painstakingly, though. Yeah, I mean, I bet Woodbine, Yonkers, Meadowlands, yeah. Western Fair when I'm really degenerate, yes. Yes, Woodbine's tough. I mean, it's another chalk chalk factory. But yes, I, I like uh, Trotters. What's up, Wizard? It's all good. You're here nonetheless. Yeah, it's definitely deep, bro. Anonymous user says, what up, Big Jeff? What up, man? All right, let's look at Aqueduct. That starts in three minutes. I have the uh, 356 here. 356. This is going to be our course where we're going to try to get some uh, another prize. The three I did like in here, Solo Empire, open 12 to 1. It's now down to 5 to 1. Morning line. This line is uh, – this horse is getting bet. Um, the favorite's going to be 5. Uh, compute it under uh, – James Ryerson and Jose Lascano, the, the tr a jockey in this. You only race 12 times together. They have two wins. Not a bad percentage, I guess. The leading jockey uh, trainer is the six retail man under Dylan Davis and uh, Ryerson as well. I think that's definitely the better uh, Ryerson horse, at least to me. Uh, I know the five will go off as the favorite, but I, I'm thinking this is going to be a Ryerson race. Um, snapshot wise, I think the six is the best horse, at least to me. Uh, but the five is surely the fastest. Um, I think this, to me, is going to be decided between the three, five, and six. Um, six also is second time Lasix, which is always a good angle. Um, I think the six will win, but I have three horses in the pick five. What's up, Ronnie Wood? Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Abden says, how come I can't stand you a coffee? Uh, you can send me a coffee. Uh, just send in a super chat, I guess. I, I don't have that, though. Just hit the little dollar sign to the bottom of the chat. What up, Ralph? What's going on, my man? What's going on? Uh, Jammin' Jet says, thank you for honoring my Uncle Joe Zito. Oh, really? Thank you, Jammin' Jet. Yeah, you know, it's always nice when the families of these people contact me. I, I try to be respectful. I found Joe to be very interesting. Definitely a mainstay down in Little Italy, that's for sure. Um, thank you for the kind words, man. That really is nice of you. Uh, like I said, whenever the families are happy, uh, you know, I feel like I did it justice. So thank you so much, Jam and Jet. Joe Zito is an interesting guy for sure. If you want to win, bet on the horses, bet on the jockeys, not the horse. Uh, yeah, I don't agree with that. Um, I, I think it's definitely important. I mean, but are there times where I'll just blind bet a jockey? No. Maybe Irad once in a while but in that case you have to make sure his brother's not racing because i think a lot of the time they collude i think it's definitely like at parks if michael sanchez dexter haddock frankie pennington yeah it's definitely a help for me to say you know what i'm probably if i'm playing a pick five like I'll a lot of times throw those horses in but i'm not just going to throw them in if like they have a good jockey but they're a shitty horse because i'm not sure if you, <laughs> i'm not sure if you know this daniel but the horse is the one that runs. Um, it's 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 a carefully orchestrated ballet. You have to have both. 
Um, but no, I don't just, at least personally, I don't just bet a horse just off the jockey. Just my opinion. Um, they are lo loading up to the gate here at Aqueduct. Um, they're actually walking up very slowly to the gate. Again, the five is getting destroyed in the market. Just to make things clear in the pick five, I have the three, five, and six here. Um, you know, I would prefer that the four, or sorry, the three win or the six. Um, I want the biggest price. What do you think of Joey's buddy, Angelo Lutz? Uh, nice guy. I think he's interesting. I enjoyed his uh, – some of his discussions on YouTube. He did a really interesting one at Rowan College a couple of years ago. A very good restaurant as well. Kitchen Consolieri. It's in Collingswood, New Jersey. Go check it out. Do you think Nicky Scarfa would eventually kill Leonetti? Uh, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, if he could have killed him from prison, he would have. Um, I mean, he was had life anyway. Um, I think Leonetti should have killed his own uncle. I think him and Salvi Testa should have did that. Skinny Guinea, what's up, my man? Thank you, brother. Five dollars. Appreciate that. How do they fix races? Um, well, jockeys will collude. Trainers um, pump up their horse with illegal shit. Um, I mean, you have to figure at Gulfstream Park, the two of the high, beg two of the best jockeys are brothers, Irad and Jose Ortiz. They're literally brothers. They race in the same races. You don't think that one of them says, hey, my horse is shitty. I'll let you win. You know, I'll, I'll stay off the front foot. Of course they do. It's colluding. They're never going to do anything about it, though. But, yeah, absolutely. Of course they're fixed. I mean, when you see a horse that's 40 to 1 beat a 6 to 5 and a 7 to 2 from 30 lengths off the lead at Turfway Park, the horse has fucking got, you know, tranquilizer. Compared to most Americans, your knowledge in European geography is decent. Uh, decent? I think I know every capital in the country. Feel free to test me. It doesn't matter. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, some One of the jockeys is off. Do we have a late scratch here? What's going on here? Oh, no, he's getting mad. What's going on here? Why is this jockey off the horse, but the horse is in the gate already? That's not normal. Who is that? The four? who we don't have that's interesting all right they're about in this is a maiden claiming forty thousand dollars purse is 43k six and a half for a long live from aqueduct here we go we don't normally do this but we're having some fun here it's 2 57 p.m on a thursday what matter can we do all right we have the again we have the three five and six co-favorites are the six and the five five is going to close this four to five not great not great for our pick five if he comes in. That said, I think at this point we're just looking to win. Set a level beginning. Everybody gets off normally. Three is at the rail, and he takes the lead. Solo Empire, we would love to see him win at five to one. That would really be nice. I would love to see the three win. I would love. Gate the wire, three. Let's go. Come on, baby. A computed is in second, and the six is uh, in third. Four and seven uh, who are – uh, the trailers uh, are the lowest odds here. So we're, our, our, all three of our horses are at the uh, beginning here, are at the lead. But here comes the seven, 14 to one. He's on the outside and he is rolling. The seven is rolling. Master Freud under, uh, who's the jockey here? Um, Herman Harkey, who's not a, uh, a normal uh, rider here, very low level rider. Six takes the lead here. Retail man, he looks strong. The five has got nothing in this race. The five is dead, a dead duck. Five is a dead duck. Six is going to have to have to win this race. Uh, can the seven make a bid? The seven is coming strong on the outside. Can he actually get to the six? He's making gains. He's making gains. The six is continuing. I think the six is going to get there, but it's going to be close. Yep, the six is going to get the job done. As I said, retail man gets it done. The straight up winner, I told you, the six. Gets it done under Dylan Davis. We'll take it. Did you tell? Did you tell? I just gave out a winner live, the six in the fourth at Aqueduct. Uh, the six under Dylan Davis and James Ryerson. I told you that was the better horse. The five had nothing there. The five should not. Why did the five get all that money? What the hell happened there? Didn't understand that. Jade Walk, what's going on? Did anybody cash with me there? What's up, Nagone? Yes, it's a great movie. I love that movie. 
Sleeko Nico says, Anthony Ramundi, is he just a comedian? What the fuck? He took some wild shit out there. Um, yeah, I think he's like an actor or comedian. He's there to write books. That's what he's there for. Yonkers is my dad's favorite. Yeah, a lot of the old fellas like uh, the Trotters. What's up, Buke? What's up, Golf Golf? Joey Potts, my man. Yeah, that's what they always say. Absolutely. I blind bet you all Rosario. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Johnny V, Mike Smith, uh, Flavian Pratt. I mean, a lot of this Hannah Anita um, jockeys. I think the best jockey in the world to me personally is Irad. I mean, Irad just gets it done, and he's usually at Gulfstream. Um, but there are some good ones at all the tracks. American Made. What's going on, American Made? Thank you for watching. Tom Sheehy, what's going on? Lizard says, only bet what you can afford. Uh, correct. Your cousin Vinny says, I freaking love this show. First time catching you live. Keep up the great work. Thank you, your cousin Vinny. Welcome in. Another person that's here for the first time. That means a lot. If anybody would like to donate to the channel, feel free to hit that super chat icon at the bottom of the chat box. I appreciate you. Thank you, cousin Vinny. Uh, I'm going to hang on for a little bit longer, guys. I'm having fun in here today. How's everybody doing on a Thursday? It's actually not raining here, thank God. Um, biggest fan says, do you ever plan on visiting Albania? Yes, soon enough, soon enough. Do I like UFC? Yes, I love UFC. Do I ever watch Larry Rolla? He's fixing races for years. Uh, no, no, I have to look into him, though. Oh, yeah, it happens all the time. Did I see the Cuban Link was on the John and Gene show? The Cuban Link rap? No, I didn't see Cuban Link was on the John. Was that true? Why was Cuban Link on there? What? No way. Really? By the way, did anyone see John A. Light recently? You guys got to see this photo. Check this out, guys. Hold on a second. I'll get that super chat in a second. Did you guys see this photo I posted? What a what a wild getup this is. Let, let me show you guys this. Very funny. You guys got to see this new photo of, of John Wayne A. Light. You got to see this. Pretty funny. Can, can anyone tell me what is he going for with this look here? Like, what is this? John Wayne A. Light? It was a Davy Crockett? <laughs> what is this? What is up with that hat? It looks like that old paper they used to write on in, like, the Revolutionary War. What is that? What is that at? Uh, did Cuban Link rap? I, not, not that I know of, but I'm going to have to do a TikTok on this if so. Was he actually on? Holy shit. What the hell? Maybe he didn't know? Uh-oh. Cuban Link. Might have been a bad decision there. Gene does seem to get a lot of rappers that did not cooperate to go on his show. I, I find that interesting. Uh, German, $10. Thank you, German. Says, I love the show and the content. Keep up the awesome work. Much love from Australia. Australian 10. Thank you, uh, Herman or German. Uh, thank you uh, for watching. I don't know if you're Spanish, your name's Herman, or you're German and your name, you just call yourself the German. Thank you, German. I appreciate it. Shout out to Australia. Got a couple of friends of ours from Australia uh, here today. Jeff, did you hear that Jake Paul and Iron Mike struck a deal to fight? Wait, what? Iron Mike Tyson. He's he's like 60. <laughs> no way. No way. I don't believe some of that stuff. That can't be true. Uh, Roba says, what's the capital of Wales? Uh, Cardiff. Who's the best jockey in flats in the United States? I'd say Irad Ortiz. What did the six pay? Uh, two to one. That's better than a four to five, dude. I have a pick five here. It's better than I want the I want the highest price, but there were two favorites, and I took the two, which is the better of the favorites, at least to me. What is going on with Don Wayne and his cowboy hat? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know Don Wayne. That's a, that's actually a funny. But I should have said that Don Wayne. That's funny. You're right. I should have said that. Uh, what's up, Jim Dancy? Anthony Martucci says, I ride Ortiz. Yeah, I agree. Lawrence Mormon, $10. What up, Lawrence Mormon? Shout out to South Philly. Appreciate you, my man. Thank you for your continued support of my show. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Uh, 
people watch it though. What if he knocked Jake Paul the fuck out? I'm still gonna say Mike Tyson could still knock him the fuck out. Uh, I've been watching for a while. Big fan. Thank you, Jim Dancy. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here, man. Hey, your cousin Vinny. What up, cousin Vinny? Thank you, cousin Vinny. Nine ninety nine. Thank you for the kind words and for the uh, super chat. Tom Sheehy, two dollars super sticker. While wow, you guys are showing me love today, thank you for being here, Tom Sheehy. That is a beautiful. I'm sure that is your granddaughter. Very cute. Uh, thank you, Tom Sheehy. Very nice. Gulfstream Park is up in ten minutes. I like the one. Yes, I'm going to handicap that in just a second. In fact, let's get to that. Gulfstream Park, we are one for one here in our pre- our previews here. In the This is a tough race, I have to say. Uh, the fifth at Gulfstream was a tough one. I went I went with the three and the seven here. Um, I went just kind of chalky here with, with the three. Irad is on this mount. I just mentioned, I think he's the best jockey in the business. 15 wins and 50 starts for Jose DeAngelo's horses. This is a Bernardini horse. Um, you look at, as far as the speed in this race, he's going to be the speed in this race, um, has faced some great competition recently. I think he's surely the fastest horse in this field. And when you look at the pace, um, he's generally got to get to the lead. And I think he will get to the lead here. This could be a gate to wire winner here. It's going to, I think, be your hope. Um, but he really has good end speed across the board. I like the three here. I, I think the three is a deserving favorite. I think we'll probably go off closer to even money. Um, I don't think it's really a question. I think the other horses that can compete here, I went also with the seven, Ali Oop Johnny under Martin Drexler. Drexler's had a great meet at Golf Dream. Um, he has won a lot. This is an Animal Kingdom horse. Um, and Castellano is a pretty good jock as far as their stats. Three wins in 12 races, pretty good percentage there. I feel like with this horse, Ali Johnny, I think he'll be pacing right off the lead. I'll be kind of in the middle towards the top of the stretch. And I think we'll find a way to be in the running here. Maybe we'll get up for a nice price here. Outside of that, I think the 10 will obviously get some love here. I kind of wish I would have included him a little bit. I just don't know. Um, I think we'll be in this. He'll be competing. Um, I think he needs a nice break. That's going to be obviously the hope. I think the three and the 10 will be at the far turn. I think they'll be competing for the win. And I think the three will just be the fastest horse. I think this is going to come down to the three, seven, and 10. I'm hoping I just don't get beat by the 10. Um, I thought the three was surely the best horse in this race. Um, and I think the seven has some some play as well. Maybe the 10 too. Uh, what did you say you liked here? You liked the one? Uh, the one is Cyclone Ranger. I think he's another horse that needs to get out to the lead. Um, I just don't know how much he has late in the tank. I don't know if he's fast enough. Hasn't really faced a hard group of, of horses recently either. The average class of, of horse he's raced just I don't think is up to the caliber here. I think most of these horses in this race are just better than him. Um, hasn't really been bet either. Hard spun, AP Indy as well. I don't know. I don't hate it. Um, I could maybe... If, if I was going to go a little deeper, I might have threw the one in here, but he didn't make it for me. Um, I'll say this. Um, I don't have that horse. It's the jacket, so I'm going to hope that you don't win. Um, I guess if I'm going to lose, I guess I hope it's yours. No, that beats me. The last famous harness driver I remember was Carmine Abatiello. I need to learn who the new guys are. Um, well, it really depends where you are. Uh, Doug McNair is a great driver at uh, – at Woodbun, did I take the Tampa Derby Saturday? Did I look at the Tampa? No, not yet, not yet. Uh, Michael Todd, who's a Coke dealer, says, "Hey Jeff, why did you catfish that girl in Alabama?" Well, that was funny enough. It's, that was actually not true. And if you knew anything about Barstool, if you knew anything about me or my time there, you would know that it was a huge story. And it was actually someone that used my photos. They're from Tennessee, and I found out who they were. In fact, I actually still know the girl today. Uh, and uh, we actually talked that night, and I apologized that someone did that to her. I felt really bad about it. If you know anything about me, though, you know that I have no interest in girls that are in college. I just don't like girls younger than me. So try again, Michael Todd. Uh, hey, Michael, why don't you join the show? You seem to have a lot to say. Uh, here, I'll drop the link for you. You're probably too much of a pussy as usual. You know, we're having fun here, Michael. But here you come to, to try to be funny. And, and again, you don't even have your facts straight. You feel bad, don't you? But you're a Coke dealer fucking loser, so it doesn't surprise me. 
Uh, there's the link, Michael. Feel free to join us. Uh, John is headed to the boardwalk immediately after the show. Yeah, that's true as well. Cuban Link went on to trash Fat Joe. Well, I'll definitely be talking about him then because uh, Fat Joe doesn't get trashed in my world. Fat Joe is a legend. Um, all right, how much longer do we have a golf stream? They're about to uh, – Walk to the post here. I'll probably hang on for this race, and then we'll uh, jump off. So we'll, we'll, we'll root this one in. Uh, as I said, for anyone playing along at home, I have the three and the seven here. Um, I'm very worried about the ten. I'm very worried. Um, in fact, um, I actually might bet the ten just to cover myself a little bit here. This is the final race of uh, the pick five. Um, we have some will pays, and I want to check in to see what they're going to be here. As I said, I have the three and the seven. Um, three dollar win. Uh, if the three wins, I'll win two hundred twenty-two dollars and forty cents. If the seven wins, I'll win fifty five hundred fifty-six dollars. I am a little worried about the ten, so it's like, do I hedge a little bit? I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to hedge a little bit with this uh, this ten here. And I'm the only one doing this, guys. So I'd urge you, you don't need to do this. I'm doing it just because I don't want to get beat uh, by uh, that horse. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm the only one doing this. You don't have to do it. I'm doing this. I'm just doing this to cover myself. Um, one second here. But, yeah, I have the uh, I have the three and the seven. I mean, this 10 is getting just destroyed in the market. I mean, it's down to three to one, seven to two. Um, it is worrying me a little bit. I'm really just doing it to hedge, um, just in case the three beats me. Um, all right, a lot of comments in here, guys. I'm missing a lot. Glad you're back. What's up, Jack Graham? Hey, Liberty, what's going on? Well, that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Cams, what's up? Doug McLean, $5 super sticker. Thank you, Doug McLean. In fact, I got to tell you, this one's going to be hard for me to handicap because it is pouring at Gallstream. I can't even see the horses going into the gate. PAL has a real tough time of it here, I think. I'm super impressed with your knowledge of capitals. Love your channel. Thank you. 10 is a great horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm playing the pick five. I have the pick five at Gallstream, and I'm actually in the final leg of both. Um, you know, we're just trying to get a win here. I have the three and the seven. The seven would be sweet. Alley Oop Johnny. Uh, that would pay out a nice uh, little price here. The ticket's only $72 ticket. So, I mean, I'm going to make money either way. Amanda Day says, I love your show from Youngstown. Are you ever going to do a show in Youngstown? Uh, maybe. It's such a small area. It's hard just because uh, people on these channels want so many big names. Maybe I'll do an extra show just for you, Amanda Day. Um, uh, if, if I'm going to, it would be on Youngstown. No, I don't watch that. I don't watch that. Yeah, you could actually Google it. It's common knowledge that it's bullshit. Believe me, if I did that, I would tell you. All right, they're off a of golf stream. They're off a of golf stream. Again, I have the three and the seven. Good breaks for both of them. I told you guys, the three needs the lead, and he's right there. Um, so that's helpful. Same with the seven, which is big. A 10 is just kind of stalking in the middle. Uh, he's about, I don't know, six lengths off the lead. Uh, the leader right now is the two, Tatanka, who I don't have at any level at four to one. Uh, the seven, Ali Johnny is in a great trip, seven to one. He is in a good spot here. And the three is right off the lead. So I think you'll see a late bid from him. I did say, and I thought he needed the lead, but I don't hate his position here. Um, I mean, we're only about halfway through the race and he's got a nice spot here. Uh, we haven't seen much yet from the 10. He's still in a similar spot, though. The two continues to lead. Tatanka, who I don't have, and it would be a death nail if I do. He does come in. I would love to see the seven. Here comes the three. He's making a bid on the inside at the rail. The three is making a big move. Uh, so is the uh, eight rough draft. Uh, the nine is in the mix. Here comes the 10 as well. The three has got a good position here on the rail. He's going to try to pass that too. Here comes the seven as well. 10's making a move. Two, does he have enough gas? He would go gate to wire if he's able to do it. The three is not kicked into gear just yet. Three is not kicked into gear just yet. Can they kick into gear? We need the seven. Come on, seven. Come on, seven. Can anyone beat this two? I don't think anyone's going to beat this two. I don't think anyone's going to beat this two. Two's going to beat us. Two's going to beat me. Can I get the late run from the three? Nope. 
it's a hell of a ride. I didn't have the two at any level. The two absolutely buried me. I didn't hedge. I didn't have the two at any level. That's golf stream. I don't know what the hell those other horses are doing. I didn't see that horse. It's a Mike Maker horse. Didn't really get bet. I mean, really good. It was a good ride. Luis Saez. I don't know what Irad was doing. I, 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 that horse needed the lead. He didn't have it. Um, I'd love to see the break there. I didn't actually get to see it. Um, seven just didn't have enough. I don't know if something happened at the gate there, and maybe he didn't get a great break there, but um, that was not uh, that was not a real good ride for my rat Ortiz. I, I get destroyed there. I lost the win bet on the ten to hedge. I didn't have that in the running here. That horse didn't even. I mean, it was a five to one, just like a middle of the road horse. I mean, what do you do? Let me see the break here. No, the three had a clean break. He just got beat. The Iron had no excuses in that race. That was a poor race by him. He didn't get out to the lead, and he should have. That horse is a top-end runner. He should have been at the lead. There's really no excuse for the three there. I, I don't know what happened. Is there any objection? Uh, we'll see. I, I don't see any. What do you do? I mean, I, you just got beat. I mean, what can you do? That was a good ride by size there. Um, all right, guys, I'm out of here. Uh, I got to go. I got to do a radio call at, at 325. You just try to stay on for about an hour. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate all of you. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Joseph uh, D. Cesare, thank you so much. Chris, Chris Cashin, shout out to the Cape Cod. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, it looks like the two beat all of us here. Looks like the two beat all of us here. Um, maybe we have an objection. You always root for an objection, but I guess we're not going to get one. Guys, that's what makes horse racing very hard. I mean, I hit four straight races. The only one that matters is the last one, and I lose. So, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, I will have a new video here on uh, Saturday, so make sure you check that out. I appreciate all the people that uh, sent in Super Chats. Craig Tracy, Mike DeBella, Justin Salsi, Sleeko Nico, German, Lawrence, my cousin Vinny, Tom Sheehy, Doug McLean. Thank you all for the contributions. It means a lot. I thank you all for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Oh, real quick, uh, Aqueduct. Uh, uh, who says that? It's the jacket says, who do I have in the final at Aqueduct? Uh, my pick four, I have the one, four, and six. One, four, and six. Uh, there's only six runners in this race. I have three of them. Um, I, the four is obviously going to be a huge favorite. Manny Franco and Chad Brown. That is a very, very strong jockey trainer combo there. Uh, I thought the six had some speed here. Um, I like what they have there uh, in calling an audible. Um, also, um, Rivera has been very good over the last month. He's been a really, really uh, good jock. Uh, and then I also have the one, Call Her Bluff, another good group, Rudy Rodriguez and Ruben Silvera. Um, I also think this group, this horse will be the early eater. We'll see if they have more speed than the seven in the last race. I'm pretty well covered in this one. I would love to see a fade of the favorite here. I want to see what our will pays are going to look like here uh, in the pick five. Should be okay. I mean, we had a on nearly $20 price. Um, in uh, in the first, uh, we have the one, four, and six. One's going to pay five hundred and four dollars. A four is going to pay three hundred and twenty one dollars, and the six is going to pay six hundred and two dollars and twenty five cents. So some decent wool pays here. Um, really, we're just looking for a win. I will obviously hope for the one or the six. Uh, the four is going to be your overwhelming favorite again. Manny Franco, very strong job uh, trainer, trainer jockey, and Chad Brown is just elite i think the four is really the best horse here I, seriously the best horse i think we have the three best horses in this race but this horse has great final end speed great middle sp i mean th this as long as there's a good break here it would be very surprising if if this horse lost the four so we'll see what happens we'll hope for a price nonetheless thanks for watching see you later